Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Hello, friend, and welcome into this Quotable Monday. And the quote that I'm featuring this time on this Monday is a quote from Seth. And Seth was channeled by Jane Roberts. Seth is a non-physical entity. And he said this quote, which is the foundation of Law of Attraction. A lot of the things that Seth talked about through Jane Roberts is the foundation of what you hear today in the marketplace around manifestation and Law of Attraction. But Seth said this, your point of power, and this is the quote, your point of power is in the present. Your point of power is is in the present. And what that means is that your past does not influence this present moment. You influence the past in how you remember from this present moment. You influence the future, how you choose to think about what's coming up around the corner. Your thoughts transcend time. As evidenced by the Nobel Prize awarded in 2022 here around quantum physics and the entanglement What they proved about entangled particles is that time is non-existence. Consciousness is faster than anything else known in the universe. So from the concept of operating out of the fifth dimension, which is purely thought, there is no time. Time is a mental construct that exists in the fourth dimension. And I've talked about time being a mental construct in previous episodes. So if you consider the idea that all time is happening now. And whether it's the past, the future, or whatever, it's just a point of perception. It's a perceptual awareness from your current self or whichever self is actually perceiving, because perception is reality. It's the self that is perceiving or looking at a particular time. And so you you have the idea that now is now, but now could be the past. Let me give you a little story for a reference. My wife sent me this video uh, off of TikTok, and this woman was recounting or recalling a time in her teens when she was at the lowest point in her life, lowest point that she could remember. She can remember laying on her bed, thinking the worst thoughts about what lie ahead. And so this woman, in her meditation, thinking about her past self, sent her younger self love just unconditional love saying, it's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. And in her mind's eye, she wrapped herself up in a virtual hug and just held her younger self tight. And then she came out of her meditation. And then she was moving about her house, and then suddenly it dawned on her. She can remember that time in her life and being overcome with a profound sense of love and just the feeling like, it was going to be okay. She had previously assumed it was a message and love from an angel. And that was actually the thing, the event that allowed her to move forward and, you know, start looking forward to her future, opening up to possibility instead of her demise. And the more she thought about it, she realized that it was her love that she sent back to her younger self that made the difference. But the question is, is did her energy actually go back in time, back to her younger self, or did she create a new memory of having that moment of unconditional love? We don't know, and it doesn't really matter, because she had the experience, she had the memory of receiving that love at a time in her life when it made a profound difference. Your point of power is in the present. Let's uh, do a little hypothetical. Let's say you go on a road trip and you've been gone. You go off on a direction. You have an idea where you're going to end up. And after about an hour and a half, you realize, oh my, I'm on the wrong road. I am on the wrong road. Now, you made that decision an hour and a half ago. Are you going to allow that decision to continue to impact your life and take you somewhere even further where you don't want to go? Or if you acquiesce to your power in the present moment, you can course correct. You can choose a new direction. You can get back on the road, 
turn yourself around, recalculating route, and get closer to where you originally intended. You see, your past does not dictate the next moment. It does not dictate where you're going to go unless you allow it to, unless you choose it in the present moment. Let's say that you did go on this road trip and you were heading in the right direction. You were heading towards what you or where you originally intended, but for some reason or another, you decided you didn't want to go there anymore and you changed your mind. Maybe you saw a brochure or maybe somebody mentioned something at the gas station. You should go this way. You should visit this town. And then in that present moment, you can make a new decision. So even though, you know, for the last hour and a half, two hours, you were heading in one direction, in a single moment, in a moment of decision, you can choose a new path. You can choose an entirely different future. You can choose a completely different reality. Your point of power is in the present. Now, one way I've talked about this in my workshops is that you are born anew every moment of every day. In this moment right now, you have the power to recreate your life in an entirely different fashion. And this goes back to my Aligned Self program. You can recreate your self-identity. You can recreate yourself right now. The only thing that ties you to the past is your willingness to pick up the baggage from yesterday and carry it with you into the next moment. But if you're willing to let go of the past and not allow it to define you, like your road trip, suddenly you realize you're on the wrong road, you're heading in the wrong direction. So you make a, a decision in that moment to go somewhere else. You could have said, oh my gosh, I made that decision almost two hours ago and I've been stuck on this road going in the wrong direction. What am I going to do? I, I, I'm going to end up at this, this place that I don't want to go. But I've already invested all this time and energy. If only, if only I would have, could have made a different decision way back then. And then I wouldn't be heading into the town that I don't want to be in. <laughs> you know, and sometimes that's how we are. You know, this happened to me and I don't have a choice. Yes, you do. It doesn't matter what happened to you in the past. It doesn't matter doesn't matter how horrible it was, how terrible it was, how ridiculous it was. It does not influence the next moment unless you recall it to the present. Because once it happened, it happened. Your point of power is in the present. So it is only our attachment to that old story that drags it into the future. Once we release it, once we let it go, and this is interesting, sometimes I've told people, just let it go. And they say, I can't. Why can't you? Because I can't let it go. And I ask you, what does it take to let something go? Well, it takes a decision to let it go. You need to choose to let it go because you're the one hanging on to it. No one's making you hang on to it. If you want to let it go, if you want to release it, if you want to you know, clear it out of your, your mind, it's, you have that choice. It's only you recalling it. It's only you bringing it back into the present moment. It's only you saying, I can't let this go. So if you let it go and you happen to pick it back up again, it, it reoccurs and you recognize that I, I'm hanging on to this again, then you can choose to let it go again and again and again, because sometimes habitual habits die hard. And so if you're attempting to let this go or release it without any other technique, you're just through your will, it may come back again. You just let it go again. You just remind yourself that this is the past. You're no longer hanging on to it. You're done with it. It's over. You let it go. When I was in my teens, my late teens, I was dating this woman, this young woman who had got her car stuck in a parking spot at an angle and somebody else parked really close and she couldn't back it out. She didn't feel confident of backing it out. So she asked me if I could do it for her. So I looked at it, I looked over the situation and there was a very small margin of error there, uh, less than an inch between the car. And I said, sure, I can get it out of there. And so I focused on the one spot. I knew it had a lot of area on the other side, a lot of forgiveness on the other side of the car. So I was able to slip the car out and literally just less than half an inch between 
her car in the other car. And she was on pins and needles. And when I got it out, she was like, oh, so relieved and said, well, I guess an inch is as good as a mile. And I have to admit, I had never heard that phrase before. And I asked her, what do you mean? Well, if you miss it by an inch, it's as good as missing it by a mile. If you miss it, you miss it. And so it could be said as a corollary, as far as time goes, there's no difference between something that happened a hundred years ago and something that happened five minutes ago. The past is the past. The relevance to you is only there by your choosing. Again, your point of power is the present. So my friend, if today's been a bad day, if the last year's been horrible, if the last two years have been not so great in this moment right now, you can choose a new destiny. You can create a new destiny. You can create a new reality just by choosing it. And then orienting your behavior, orienting your story around the new reality that you just created. Sometimes you'll hear this talked about out in the marketplace from other teachers and such as quantum jumping or jumping timelines. You see, if you continue to tell the old story, there is a predictable future that lie ahead. And if you want to create a new timeline just by choosing a different future right now, and as Shakespeare said, to assume a virtue, act as if you have it not. So as you move forward, you tell the story as if it's the truth, the story of that you're walking into, or in other words, the future that you're living into. You basically create the result that you want, what you want to experience in the future, and then you live as if it's inevitable. And you might ask, how do I live as if it's inevitable? Well, consider that when you exhale right now, exhale the breath that's in your body, you are assuming that the next one is going to be available, that there is going to be more than enough air at your disposal. When the sun goes down tonight, you're pretty confident that the sun is going to come up tomorrow. It feels inevitable. So that feeling that you have around that, you just tune into your body, that feeling, and you can project that out into this new future. You know, saturate this future that you're living into with this feeling of inevitability. You associate the two. Now, if that idea feels like it might be a little bit difficult or outside your purview, outside your reach, then consider putting yourself in my High Vibe Life course because I teach you exactly how to do that. But I'll give you a pro tip right here that you can utilize. It's pretend. Just pretend that feeling's there. Pretend it's inevitable. Assume that it's inevitable. If it was inevitable, how would I behave? What would my actions be? Again, the point of power is in the present. You just choose to have that feeling associated with the future that you're creating. Here's one more story that I'd like to relate to you. And that this comes... Here's one more story that I'd like to relate to you around this whole idea that the present moment is where the power is. It comes from Dean Radin. He is the lead scientist at the Institute of Noetic Sciences. And he said that there's been a number of studies where people have sent a positive healing intention back in time to someone who is currently ill, currently in this conversation. They take a look at where in this person's life just before they found out they were ill, they were still fairly healthy or somewhat healthy, could we send a positive healing intention back in time at a time where it would have made a difference? Back before they actually found out that they were ill and created a whole new belief system around their state of health and what was possible. And so by sending this intention back in time before they found out they were sick, this was a seed thought in their consciousness, an energetic vibration that allowed them to move forward to create a new trajectory into the future, one of health and vitality. What the researchers found out through these studies astounded even them because they couldn't explain it. It didn't make sense according to the, the traditional material world because these people that were prayed for, positive intended for, sent back healing thoughts into their past, their symptoms began to abate. Some people were cured completely. They could not explain it, because it was statistically relevant. 60% of the people 
were affected by this healing, by this shift. Their, their symptoms improved, their health improved. How can you explain that? Well, you can't when you're couched or, well, you can't when you come from the physical world, the physical sciences. You think about, because when you think about the physical sciences, how they began to explain the material world, how they began to explore it, they started out with physics, Newtonian physics, to explain the dynamics that were occurring in the 3D material world. And physics gave rise to chemistry. Chemistry explained biology. And from biology, that explained psychology. And then this idea of consciousness began to play. And where does that fit in? If there's a hierarchy, you know, if we start out with physics and we end up in consciousness, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the other paradigm. So that's been tended to be dismissed. But if you consider that consciousness is fundamental, intrinsic to the nature of reality, and you begin with consciousness, well, that explains physics, that explains chemistry, that explains biology, that explains psychology. It explains psychic perception. It explains so many other things. When you begin with the precept that consciousness is fundamental to the workings of the universe, that the universe is consciousness, it's all pervasive. And when you consider that nothing is faster than the speed of consciousness, when we look at the Nobel Prize experiment, you know, our, our perception, our conception of time has been diminished. It's been shattered. And so if you want to send a thought, a, a positive healing intention to the past, of course you can, because it's thought, it's consciousness. Of course it's going to work. Of course it's going to make an impact. Just like that woman that sent unconditional love back to her, her 15-year-old self when she was lying on the bed and considering to doing you know, horrible things to her body. That It shifted because nothing is faster than the speed of thought. Your point of power is in the present moment. Whatever you decide to happen, if you send it with enough intensity, enough vibrational frequency, and you get to decide how much is there, how much you stand behind it, how much feeling of inevitability you put behind it, you can literally create anything that you want. The only thing that stops you is the idea that maybe you can't. And again, it's just an idea. This is literally law of attraction. It's how we manifest things. So this is how you put it to practice in your life. You, you pick a future that you want to create, a future circumstance that you'd like to manifest, or maybe even something into the past, but pick something that is a dinky-do item. And when I say dinky-do, that's something that's insignificant. You don't have a lot of resistance about You don't have a big story on why it might not happen. It just might be fun to play with. So you pick something that is a dinky-do. You pick, you know, manifesting a parking spot before you leave the house. Let's say that you want to manifest clear traffic, easy all the way, like the parting like the Red Sea. And I've done that myself. Or maybe you uh, intend to find pennies or dimes or quarters showing up in your environment, showing unexpectedly. And then you start finding them in your pockets. You start finding them on the floor. You, the, the, as you walk to the store from the parking lot, you, you come across a quarter or more. And again, you weren't attached to it not happening. It just might be fun if it did happen. And then if you consider that it's inevitable that there's going to be quarters showing up in your, you know, in your future, you're going to start seeing quarters all the time in the most unexpected places. Another thing that I've done is I've taken a look at a date on a calendar. I actually look at that day and then I imagine that day shining brighter than all the others. And that there's just a, an intense amount of positive energy that is a, going to occur on that day for me, for the people I'm around. Maybe you envision brilliant sunshine, a perfect day, perfect weather, and it's going to be amazing. Again, these are situations where you do not have a story that is contrary to what you want to create. You're not attached to the outcome, meaning that you don't need it to happen. If it happens, it might be fun. If it doesn't happen, okay. You're not attached to it because when we're attached to an outcome occurring, then we're very focused on the need or the lack of it currently in our life. Another way to think about it, that if it happens, it would be fun. It would be amazing if that happened. But if it didn't happen, it wouldn't be like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? No, it's like if it didn't happen, it's, I guess it doesn't happen. And then if it doesn't happen, you can consider it, you can say it like this. Delays are not denials. Sooner or later, it's going to show up. 
So, the fundamental attitude is play. Play with this idea. Understand that your point of power is now, and you can create momentous things, monumental things, wonderful things, fantastic things, by making a decision right now that you're going to move off in a new direction. You're going to create a whole new future. And again, you envision the future, you focus on the future that you want, you become very associated to it, you get detailed clarity around it, and then you live into it. How do I have to be to live into this future as if it's inevitable? And in doing so, you forget about how it's going to happen. You don't care how it's going to happen. You just assume that the universe is going to fill in all the details. So that's it for this Quotable Monday. Until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel Danovi, urging you to follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner directed as you engage in the epic adventure. (laughs) 